Hello, I'm Leon Lobo, and I'm head of the National Timing Center at the National Physical Laboratory in the UK. The National Physical Laboratory is the UK's National Measurement Institute, and we're responsible for traceability to the SI. So we, have, we provide the primary standards that provide traceability to the second, the kilogram, the meter, et cetera. And in this case, I'm gonna talk about time and why it's important for our current digital landscape, but what we are doing as well to secure it for the future. Now, in our current crisis, and I hope all of you are, are well in, the, in this, we have an increasing dependence on a rapidly evolving digital landscape. I mean, just the fact that this conference is being held virtually rather than face-to-face -face is testament to that. But our digital way of working is going to endure well beyond this crisis. As well as that, the, all the emerging applications that are being accelerated like this, this comms piece that we are discussing today, but also things like drones for delivery, autonomous vehicles on our roads, smart cities, wide area IoT, sensor networks and the like, are all gonna rapidly progress. But in order to ensure that we protect those and secure those as they are developed, we also need to consider what their dependencies are, particularly on things like position, navigation and timing as well as the threat landscape that affects these. There's a whole host of uh, solutions being developed to help support that case and put in place alternative solutions. Uh, and we'll be talking about one of these now as part of the National Timing Center program. So our dependency across critical national infrastructure is quite significant from the point of view of our reliance on global navigation satellite systems, like GPS, for example. And that's the case, as I said, across these sectors. But what is also uh, of real importance when we look at how we secure these capabilities is what the inter interdependencies are. And the dependency on comms is very widespread across pretty much everything that we do on a daily basis and across these sectors. Now, this dependency was highlighted in the Blackett report on satellite dependencies a few years ago. But what it also raised, which was more important, was that there's a, there's a lack of awareness of the dependency on the satellite signals in our infrastructure. The London Economics report that's on the left there raised the fact that should we lose global navigation satellite systems, we would lose a billion pounds a day to the UK economy. And that's quite significant to consider. Now, time really is an invisible utility for a lot of our digital landscape. It tends to fall into the gap between the cyber and the physical, but it is underpinning our comm systems. So our networks of today, our energy sector for phase synchronization of the grid, our finance sector for time traceability, for regulatory compliance, but also defense, security, space. It, it covers a lot of uh, capability, but it is almost always not considered because it's a signal that falls like rain from the sky and it is very, very cheap to implement uh, a GNSS receiver but we need to consider where we've got that in place and start to protect that. But what I'll be talking about today is not just about the uh, protecting what we have in place, but also considering what could we do if we were given better time and frequency signals. And that's what the National Timing Center is all about. It is about uh, the resiliency piece, but also being able to provide this next generation capability by providing better signals to our infrastructure. So at, at NPL, as I mentioned, we, we not only provide traceability to the SI, and we've got a whole host of developments for the, for the redefinition of the second, developing the next generation of atomic clocks and the like, but we also manage what is 
UTC NPL, which is the national time scale. UTC being coordinated universal time, the global time scale. So at NPL, we have a whole suite of atomic clocks that contribute to the global time scale formulation, but we also disseminate that to the UK. And what we're doing now with the National Timing Center is securing that capability, but also providing that those signals beyond what we do now over RF broadcasts, over the internet, over fiber in the ground, as well as satcoms, by providing an extended capability which is much more secure and resilient for applications of today, but also future applications. So to that extent, with some of our government partners, we've been looking at what ought to be done within the UK on that front and what those user requirements are. So whether it is, as I mentioned, for low latency comms, for synchronization or 5G networks, for better spectrum utilization, but also what could we do in the future, for example, with, with 5G potentially disseminating time references um, over the, those signals that are broadcast. And those are the elements that really we are starting to engage across industry, across government, to start to consider how we could leverage better timing and how we could deliver better timing based on what is in place across the board. So this program is a five-year program. We've got about 36 million pounds to develop this capability. And it's being delivered with other government organizations. And the, the, the primary aim really is to support our critical national infrastructure for the future by developing the capability around resilient time in the UK. So we've got three primary objectives for this. One is about resilience and securing what is the national time scale as it stands, so UTC NPL. We've got an innovation objective, which is being delivered with our partner Innovate UK in government. And that really is about stimulating the supply chain for timing, frequency, time dissemination solutions towards generating new products and services for the UK. And then we've got a final objective, which is around skills, education, and training. And to that, we are assessing what is in place and addressing the gaps by putting in place training courses, degree level modules, PhD studentships, apprenticeships, secondments, and the like, to support industry, ensure that they have the skill sets coming through the door rather than trying to upskill and reskill personnel which is almost always the case to date. So from that resiliency perspective, what we are doing is uh, putting in place what we term as RETC, which is our resilient enhanced timescale infrastructure. And what that is, is essentially an enhanced capability from what we've got at NPL today, but putting it in place over a geographically distributed set of sites which are secure and meshed such such that we are leveraging multiple modes of dissemination so including fiber in the ground including satcoms for two-way satellite time and frequency transfer as well as GNSS in order to ensure that in the event that any one site went down we still have a national capability and we're doing it but putting in place those multiple modalities because they don't have common failure modes. And we can leverage that towards a resilient capability for the future. All these sites will be contributing to the global timescale uh, and to the BIPM, which is the Bureau of Weights and Measures, which is the umbrella organization for the national measurement institutes like NPL. They formulate uh, the global time scale and then the real time realizations are the likes of the national labs that disseminated to the nation. But just managing the, the, the national time scale is not sufficient. It's about really that dissemination piece. 
As I mentioned to date, we disseminate over RF broadcasts, over the internet, over dark fiber into the city of London, but also leveraging GNSS for some more bespoke implementations. What we'll be doing as part of the National Timing Center program is putting in place R&D nodes on a sector by sector basis, disseminating time and frequency references to these nodes, but shaping them with industry to, to structure the level of capability required for these references, but also things like the interfaces, the holdover requirements for that sector, such that beyond the five years, we can then pick and place and scale up this capability where it's required for infrastructures across the board. So we'll be doing that uh, for the comm sector with the 5G Innovation Center in Surrey. We are looking at doing that for autonomous vehicles, for quantum, for potentially for energy, and look at working with you to shape what is required, not just for the applications of today, but for the challenges of tomorrow. And from the skill set, what we've done to date is uh, engage directly with industry and academia, but also put out surveys to understand what those gaps are. And based on those gaps, what we are doing now is putting together a training blueprint, which will then inform the, the training courses, the secondments, the degree modules, that we'll be putting in place with industry, with academia, to support the UK community essentially have the right skills in this area of timing and frequency. And that's primarily it. So really, I want to reach out and, and ask you to engage. We've got the, the, the links there as well as the email addresses. Please do contact us. Tell us what you feel as the, your, your pain points as it stands, but also consider what you could do with better timing if you had the, the, the references, those signals uh, for future applications. So it's not just about making what is in place much more resilient and secure, but also considering the element of better uh, signals and what they could offer in terms of disruptive applications of the future based on better synchronization, better spectrum allocation and utilization, but also being able to monitor and control a low latency applications as well and low latency networks. That's it for me. Thank you very much. And please, please do engage.